If there's an escalator going up. <laughs> I'd like to welcome everyone to White Sands National Park. Um, it's always really lovely to come out and do these tours and see so many people excited to learn more about nature and more about the park. It's just, it's awesome. I, I really appreciate you all coming out here and being curious and wanting to learn. My name is Gabrielle and I work here as a park ranger intern and I will be your guide today. Um, some of you all might be wondering what you have gotten yourself into, and I will let you know. Um, the Sunset Stroll is a half-mile hike. It's going to take around an hour to complete, um, and we'll have various stops along the way. Um, and we're going to land on a nice dune to kind of see that sun actually touch those mountaintops, signifying the start of sunset. The reason why White Sands is so unique is because... The, there have had to be so many transformations that have taken place in order to make this place happen. So before we get into the story of everything else at White Sands, we really have to get into the story of how everything got here. Now, White Sands has really, really ancient roots. It all started 280 million years ago before the existence of humans, before the existence of mammals, even before the existence of pine trees. Now, during this time, there was a very shallow sea that covered much of New Mexico. And this sea was called the Permian Sea. And it had the perfect ingredients and the perfect conditions for calcium and sulfur to kind of mingle together and create calcium sulfate, which is also known as gypsum and it deposited this gypsum on top of its pre-existing seabed, on top of sandstone and even older limestone. And it stayed like that for a really, really long time. But everything changes, and eventually shifting tectonic plates push together and push that seabed up and up and up and created a mountain range. So if you look to the east, you'll see the lovely Sacramentos. It's a really clear day today, so you can really see them in all their glory. Um, the light-colored banding on those mountains is actually the gypsum that was deposited 280 million years ago. Now, if you look to the west, you'll see the San Andreas Mountains. And if they weren't backlit right now, you would actually see very similar banding on them. And that is because they were both part of the same ancient seabed 280 million years ago. So why are they so far apart? Well, around 30 million years ago, there's a mighty rift that tore through New Mexico. And it slowly, it didn't happen all at once, it slowly tore and stretched and ripped the crust of those mountains apart creating the Tularosa Basin. So that's great. We have the mountains, we have the basin, but the elephant in the room still is how did all this sand get here? Um, and what's pretty fascinating is that the same process that created the sand 10,000 years ago is still the same process that creates the sand today. And that story goes like this. 
Every summer, we have a rainy season here at White Sands. We call it the monsoon season. And um, during this season, lots of rain will trickle down those mountains. Um, now, gypsum is highly water soluble, meaning that when it mixes with water, it's going to dissolve. So the gypsum and the water together will travel down those mountains and collect at the lowest point of the basin. And here they'll form a temporary or ephemeral lake known as Lake Lucero. Now, you can kind of think of the gypsum at this point as um, a caterpillar in a cocoon, right? So it's kind of this dissolved mess and it's about to go through a really beautiful transformation. So when the water evaporates away in the fall, the gypsum will actually reform itself into crystals. So these crystals are called selenite. They are a pure version of gypsum. Now these crystals are very, very soft. They're softer than your fingernail, meaning that they are absolutely no match for freezing and weather and wind. So the wind will blow and will kind of blow chunks of these crystals off. And then two things will happen. One, as the wind blows the, the crystal chunks away, they'll hit other things and they'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. When they hit these other things, they'll actually get scratches on their surface, turning them white. And that's because it's scattering the light particles. So really our eyes are perceiving them as white. So in just 10,000 years, um, 275 square miles of these tiny crystal particles have built up, creating White Sands National Park. Mm -hmm.